What is up y'all? Welcome back. Today, we're doing a really exciting video. I was contacted by the lovely team over at Givenchy and they asked that they could just send me all of the Prism Libre collection because I love the Prism Libre skincare and concealer so much. And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> yes, I would love to try all of those things. And so I got the most generous, oh, hello. Not my address. I got the most generous box of stuff in the mail that I am just really, I'm like so excited to put it on my face that I haven't even tried any of it yet. So we're gonna try it all together today. We have blushes, two different ones, two of the Prism Libre blushes. I have the powder, which this is a different powder than the one that locked up on me the first time. Whole different vibe, right? It's a brand new day for some Prism Libre powder. I have the holiday eyeshadow palette. This is gonna be so much fun. What was awesome actually, oh my, was that Steph of Beauty and Hype was actually traveling through here yesterday and so I got to have lunch with her and then she came back here to look at the new collection, the Finding Ferdinand collection. She got to do a little sneaky peeky, but I opened this with her. She was like, oh my, oh my, you know what I mean? It's just like really fun to open these things, unbox these things with another makeup lover. It's very rare to get to do those kinds of things. And then we FaceTime Natalie because <laughs> we're just having, having a good old makeup time and perfume time, but either way, that is something going on my face today. They sent the new highlighter, which I have swatched and I'm so excited about it. It kind of reminds me of, so it's the Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Caring Highlighter. It kind of reminds me of the Rosy Light Drops from Chanel, except it's thinner and not as pigmented, but it doesn't have any like visible pieces of glitter in it. It's just this really beautiful kind of glow on the skin. So I think I might start with this underneath the complexion and then, I don't know, see how much we can push the limits with it. Two eyeliners, one is in black and one is in black. So they're both black, they're all black. Anybody in the secret garden, are you blind? They're all black. So black eyeliner, it's probably gonna be a mood. And um, sorry if my lip gloss is doing gross things just there. I got a little overzealous with my candy glaze today, but they sent so many lip products. They sent one, two, three, four, five formulas. So obviously I've only got two lips, not really sure how that's gonna go down, but I have to say that between the holiday, we'll swatch all of them, but between the holiday ones and all the different packaging and stuff like that, I think that the one that I am most excited about color-wise is this one right here. This is the La Rouge Sheer Velvet in the shade 10, and it is just like, Oh, believe your eyes, do not adjust your televisions. I've gotten a piece of lint on it. I am stoked to put all this stuff on my face. Let's go ahead and jump in. I do want to thank Givenchy for doing this, but I also want to say that I was expecting to get the foundation because they asked me if I, my foundation shade and then the foundation's not in here. I don't know if it's being sent separately, but I'm not going to like, you know, sit here and hold my breath about it. And also I'm not going to be a brat about it and be like, well, get you to it. like this, the concealer I use as a foundation all the time. And it's not, I would say it's not a make do situation. It is a really good foundation that just happens to come in a concealer container. So I'm not mad about it at all. And I'll probably end up buying it. Like it's in my Sephora cart. I was just holding off because they happened to reach out to me. And then this came the next day. I don't even know how they did that. <laughs> like, it's just like they were waiting for my address and they were just like, send it. They just like threw it over the fence at me. But either way, I'm going to start here with Rose in the face highlighter. And I'm just going to kind of use it almost like a you know, a color corrector underneath my eyes a little bit, the way that I do with the rosy light drops. And you know, none of this is like wildly inexpensive, but it's also a more approachable price point for what you're getting than something like the Chanel. Plus there's no fragrance and there's a fragrance. I love the Chanel fragrance, but if you, you know, if your skin doesn't like a fragrance or if you don't like the Chanel fragrance, it could be a good option. So yeah, it's a nice little illuminating color correcting. It's really hydrating, which I like because that's kind of, I feel like, what's the other half of the formula, because it's a little bit, like I said, a little bit less pigmented, a little bit less kind of like intensely concentrated than the Rosy Light Drops. And so, oh, look at that. The rest of it is giving like skincare, which is lovely, but it's still super, super thin. Like I'm not feeling any emollients on my skin really. Look at that. It just looks like beautiful, reflective, like wet skin. It's just wet skin. That's what it looks like. It looks like wet skin. That is freaking great. That is awesome. Wow, that's pretty. We're gonna kind of, like I said, push the limits with that. See what I can get out of it on top of my complexion as well. I got something. There's like little hairs floating around. Okay, so 
Like I said, in the spirit of using this exactly how I think that it performs best, the Skin Caring Concealer, which I've had now for quite a while, it came out right around the April Sephora sale, and we are now almost upon the November Sephora sale. So I am just very steadily working my way through this, and Natalie actually just texted me, Natalie of my skin trust, just texted me and said that she bought it, she used it a few times, she doesn't totally love it, and you know, everyone's different, and that she's just gonna send it to me. <laughs> I was like, cool. I don't object to that at all because I will use it because I'm almost out here of this one, I think, especially using it as a foundation. You know, you go through these things a little more quickly, but I always say pound for pound, this is just such a massive amount of product for the, the cost of it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they start cranking that cost up, but I use the shade N95 and it just works so beautifully. I do, I do think I'm going to buy the foundation though. I just want to know. Do you know what I mean? It's not a matter of like whether I need it in my collection. It's just a matter of like whether it's like wildly different. I'm sure obviously it has, it's, it's been around a long time. So I'm not going to be like the first person telling you how it is. The concealer is much newer, but I don't really hear about it very much. I'm wondering if maybe the finish is not quite as much of like a revelation as this one is, or, you know, it's just things tend to kind of go out of conversation because of the general churn of the beauty industry. You know, there's just stuff coming out all the time. It feels like there's always something new to talk about. Wow, I look like a, a baby. I look like a newborn baby. So y'all are liking the 4K. That makes it all worth it. That just makes it all worth it. That makes me so happy. I loved the way that it looked when I uploaded. Tell you what, there are a lot of different settings and bells and whistles in a camera, like the one that I have. And when I took the first test footage of the 4K quality, I had it on some weird kind of standard setting, some very default basic setting, and I looked like a witch. I was like, this is worse than the iPhone front-facing camera that's like, you know, creating things on my face that aren't there. Like, am, am I using that, you know, horrible TikTok filter that's aging me 40 years? And then I switched it to neutral. <laughs> That just made it so that it didn't, like the camera didn't automatically deepen all of the blacks, like all of the shadows, like just, you know, pull them into the abyss. And I was like, oh, <laughs> now you can see my pores and the makeup and everything and how it's performing, but I don't look like I'm possessed by the devil. So, you know, that was a plus. So that's, that's the concealer as a, con as a foundation. And I'm still going to use it as a concealer, but I mean, God, look at that. It's beautiful and it's a fantastic shade match. So good. But I do like that the finish of the highlighter still shows through. That's nice. That's good to know. Look at how that layers. Look at how that layers, the opacity that you're able to create, but it's so hydrating. By the way, this is not like sponsored. I, I don't know if I needed to clarify that. This isn't sponsored. I just got a box of awesome makeup in the mail. So that's why we're doing this. But I've been loving this concealer for a long, long time. That looks fantastic. That looks so good and it feels so good. I just think that this is just such a, it's just such a good formula. And I'm so stoked on the highlighter. Once we get the blush and everything on, I'll see how the highlighter works on top of other things as well. But let's <laughs> go toe to toe with my arch nemesis, my sworn enemy. Now, see what happened was I bought this, but I bought the one that had more of like a color correcting quality to it. It had the blue and the green and the purple and the pink in it. And this is the presumably gray powder the setting powder, but the lid got stuck and I couldn't get it to unstuck. I just couldn't get it to. And I tried everything. I stuck it in like a vise in my garage. It was just a loss. I don't even know what happened to it at this point. I definitely like threw it somewhere. Nonetheless, <laughs> I have a brand new one here and whatever I did that time, I'm going to be very careful not to do it again. The idea here is that this is going to combine a bunch of different colors. I don't use the powder puff. I mean, this is very cute and everything, but it's gonna apply powder in a more concentrated way than I'm trying to do today. I'm gonna grab Rattly Natalie here, just cause she rattles. That's why she's called Rattly Natalie. And I'm gonna dip that in there and see what this color looks like. Nice, mattification. It is so nice to not have to explain to y'all what these things look like because you can see it. <laughs> it was so cool to read the comments as that video went up. Everybody was like, it feels like you're sitting in front of me. Like that was great. In fact, it's gotten a little brighter in here. I'm gonna turn this light down. 
There we go. I want to maintain that transparency if we can. Ooh, I like that. It also has quite a fragrance to it, but I like it. I like the smell. Do you hear her? She's just so enthusiastic. I like that. I thought it was going to appear blushy, you know, but you're actually getting a little bit of coverage out of it. I'm leaving it off of my cheeks because I want to have a little bit of that luminosity, but the way that I apply powder, that makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna keep the powder puff in there just so that the powder doesn't get everywhere. And we are going to be very careful to align the threads. So far, so good. Okay, I will admit that these colors right here, mm, that terrifies me a little bit. They look pretty wild. The coral one is the one that I threatened to buy because it just looked so good. And I think I've seen Hindash use this one specifically, I'm not sure, but I was like, do I need that? And he was like, yes, so here we are. I think that coral is the name of the game today. I do like that there's a little mirror on the lid. It's very on the go, you know, although, I am never, and I think I said this when I talked about it in like a tepid taste video, like I would never apply a blush with a powder puff. I apply way too much blush for that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, what shall I apply this with? I wanna use something really fluffy. I was gonna grab an Eco Tools brush, but it's like really dirty. So this is the BK104 and here we go. So this was the shade Voile Corail, you know, cor coral. I don't know if voile means, or voile, voila. I'm terrible at French. Huh, maybe it's because I didn't powder my cheeks first. Maybe I should have powdered my cheeks first, but it seems like it's not going on super evenly, but it's really pretty. Usually I would have bronzer on first and I think that that's also kind of what's distorting my perception of it is just that I wanted to go straight in with the blush. Nope, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I do think that like, I, you know, I probably should have powdered my cheeks first, but once it got a little bit like of a, a stability to the surface, like I put enough blush on that it kind of mattified the foundation that now it's going on really evenly. Woo, that color, that color though. Oh man, pretty easy to remedy. Okay, yeah, that's not a big deal. It's really not as scary as I thought it was going to be. When you see it in here and you're like, you see it picked up on the brush, you're just like, oh God. But it's actually super forgiving because it's really, really fluffy. So, I mean, y'all know I love me some blush. I'll always put on too much blush. And this is such an easy color for me to get carried away with too. But like, I'm really going in and it kind of reminds me <laughs> like a little bit of the Pat McGrath, the blush without caution, because you're putting it on and you're like, hmm, I could just kind of check out and do that all day. Except I checked out for like two seconds and um, I put a big stamp on my forehead, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay, here's what we're not gonna do. Here's what we're not gonna do. There we go. Khaki. Let me do my like bronzer and contour real quick. We'll do powder bronzer and powder contour since we're already here, you know? And I'm just gonna use the bronzer out of the Hourglass palette here, this little guy. It's so chill. And I will put it on this so that we can kind of concentrate that. This is the Angie Hot and Flashy A507. They just sent me another, I think it might just be like a holiday packaging situation of the Angie Hot and Flashy brush set from BK. I have a discount code. 10% off a BK, but you know, when they do those kinds of bundles and stuff, they're always a really good value. And all these gray handled ones that you see me use, that's the BK and Angie Hot and Flashy collection. And they are some of the most unique brush shapes that are just indispensable in my routine. So definitely check that out. I don't know why I was just contouring with it. I just kind of like brain farted and started contouring, but we are just bronzy bronzy. Yeah, I mean, I have to say the Givenchy blush for all of kind of, you know, the perceived fussiness of having to dump it out in order to use it, it gives a very similar finish to an hourglass blush, which is a very high compliment from me. And then we just need a little bit of contour. I'm gonna use the Victoria Beckham just cause it's sitting here in front of me and because I love making Natalie cringe. 
<laughs> at the state of my Victoria Beckham contour palette. I'm definitely like very, very blushy, you know, but I'm really here for it too. I think that this is going to take quite a dramatic turn when I start putting on the eyeshadow anyway, because the holiday palette is not backing down from a challenge. It's definitely got some colors in it. We don't have to use all of the colors in it, obviously. I, I That's me telling myself that, because I'm always just like, well, if the color exists, then people are gonna wanna see it. It's like, no, you wanna see how it functions? So this is Shea. This is the Lanine de Givenchy palette. And uh, yeah, I mean, according to Steph, this is one of the holiday releases. I am not versed enough to know, but it is super beautiful. Actually, let me swatch all these for you. This is my first time even experiencing a Givenchy eyeshadow formula. So we will do this together. So it's nine pans. And I think that when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, well, it's gonna be a lot of pink. It's really not. It's one pink shade. The other two that look kind of pink in the pan are actually a lot more kind of like copper red berry. So that makes it easier for me to wear and a lot less scary. But I think that we're going to, you know, follow my instincts and stay in like these nice kind of warm browns. That's gonna be using most of the palette anyway. It just goes to show how differently something looks swatched or in use than it does a lot of times, you know, as a composition in a nine pan. Cause this looks really chaotic to me and it's not. Okay, I'm gonna start in. I don't have a primer on or anything. I guess we're just gonna <sighs> raw dog it. I am going with the 211 here in that center shade, which is just reading as like, well, it's khaki. That color is khaki by definition. And it looks like it's going to make a really great transition shade. Like my ideal crease shade, because what that does is it builds a believable shadow. It's like that perfect contour matte taupe kind of color for my skin tone. You know, that's not gonna be deep enough for everybody, but that's exactly what I would want. Something that was a curveball for me recently, there is a creator, I will put her handle on the screen because it's not installed in my brain permanently. God, that's a really easy to work with formula. But this black creator on TikTok and you know, her stuff shows up to me on Instagram because I am old and I don't use TikTok. She was actually talking about something that's incredibly nuanced. I mean, she started out by swatching the Date Night Foundation, which I did review from Euphoria. She's swatching it on her face, she has dark skin. She was swatching the darkest shade in that shade range on her skin, and I mean, it just glowed. It was so far off. And I was like, kind of retraced my steps talking to a friend about it. I was like, when I was picking mine out, I have to admit, I assumed because the steps were so small and you couldn't see the whole shade range when I was picking mine out, you know what I mean? They'll just show you like four at a time and you have to use like a slider to get to the other ones. I just assumed it was a massive shade range because the like pale shades were so nuanced. That's what you get for assuming. First of all, absolutely not. It's like 90% white and then there's like <laughs> four. And I was like, there was just something about it where I just like made the assumption that like a, let's see, which one do I wanna use? The silvery one or the, I'm gonna use the like the shimmery one with like the pink flex in it over here to do my like uh, brow bone and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I made the assumption because it was a, an indie brand that, you know, they wouldn't be so stupid in the year of our Lord 2023 to put out a shade range that looked like Chanel 2003, but uh, they did. And also, and here's the kicker, right? The images online were a lie. The actual swatches, the makeup on the models, the picture of the bottle are not what you end up with in your hand when you order the deepest shade. So the pictures have been doctored. And I watched some more of her content and come to find out this is a very common practice. Brands have figured out that instead of making the deepest shades and actually being inclusive, they can Photoshop their pictures to look like they are. And honestly, they do a bad job of that even. And then when you get the shade in your hands, it's still not inclusive at all. Yeah, there was like a bunch of them that are just very popular that I've tried and I felt so stupid because that's what I'm doing is I'm not buying every shade. I'm not getting every shade in PR. I am assuming that what I see online with my color theory eyes is reality and it's not. I mean, guys, it's just it's like the thing that keeps dawning on me over and over and over again. It's like, no one's gonna do the right thing. Like. None of these companies are gonna do the right thing. It's so freaking aggravating and it's embarrassing, but it does. It makes me lose a lot of faith 
any faith I had, which wasn't much to begin with. I'm actually planning on doing a video where I talk about kind of the real reason that, or I guess I was, I don't know if I'm really gonna do it because it's like, I don't know, I'm not like an investigative journal journalist and people might already know about it, but yeah, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use those two, the kind of coppery and then the orange one. The reason, like for example, that a lot of these companies are going under right now, like the the good ones, right? Because I consider Aether to be, you know, I know Tyla personally and she took every possible pain from start to finish to make a company that was like zero waste and sustainable as possible and, you know, very conscious of doing everything right after she had worked for Sephora Corporate for so long to see all of the, you know, kind of terrifying things that can happen in the hidden parts of that industry. And so that was what she tried to do. And of course they closed. And here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize. There are these predatory companies that just like, I don't know if y'all have seen that episode, is it Silicon Valley? It might be Silicon Valley where there's like these predatory companies that find one law or one, you know, someone would be copyright or whatever. And they find one law that is this little loophole that they can like sue somebody over in terms of like a quote unquote safety violation about like the molecule size of titanium dioxide or something like that. And they will just wake up in the morning and file suit against every company that uses it. They just look through their ingredient lists and they say this particular size of this particular molecule of this particular pigment has like a, a risk of toxicity or whatever and of course it's BS but the companies then have to pay them to go away and so if a company can't pay them to go away you know they have to shut down and it's also worth noting that if a company sells at Sephora Sephora has a clause in their partnership that it's like if you get sued and Sephora gets sued because of your product or whatever that you have to pay Sephora's legal fees as well, which a lot of brands can't afford to do. So that's the other thing. And that's why you're seeing a lot of brands closing. You know, there's public record of these things. It's very easy if you look up like titanium dioxide cosmetics lawsuit, you'll see that they have filed it against Lila B. Natasha Denona. I don't remember all of them, but like you just scroll through it. It's all public record. It's crazy. And I feel like it's like in the same mouthful of, of saying that like, you know, we can't trust any companies and there are no good companies. And then it's like the good companies that are really trying to get their feet under them that have crap like that happen to them. So none of it's fair. That's really pretty because it's like, it's, it's not necessarily about, you know, whether or not you're doing something wrong. It's about whether you can afford to defend yourself against these you know, predatory companies. I mean, most of these really big companies can, and that's why these companies exist that are doing all the suing. But, you know, they also don't care if they shut down a small company. This is America after all, right? I'm gonna pop that silver on the inner corner and just see what happens here. I'm not a big silver girl, but we'll see. See on silver girl, see on by. But yeah, I guess that was just my whole point. I'm not sure that that's enough to like fill an entire video. We're gonna go with that bright orange color and then just tippy tap that there we go Ooh, she's giving fall she's giving chuggy she's giving i mean the palette's not the eye look is it's giving love love, love uh, in a good way we took kiddo to a farm over the weekend i might have already talked about this but yeah i mean it's like everybody brings their kids from the city out to experience the pumpkin fall of it all and it's just hilarious it's so cute and uh i am completely here for it i am like not cynical about it at all i'm just like this is adorable give me all the hay rides give me all the apple cider donuts let's freaking go Ooh, this is a really pretty formula i have i'm just kind of getting my head around it it's a really subtle formula from the standpoint of you know comparing to other things in my collection like you know the full spectrum but i will say it is quite pigmented and a little bit more drama than you would get from a lot of other like luxury formulas necessarily like it's a little bit i feel like it's not quite as easy to blend as like syrah for example but it's in that family you know of just being like soft and blends itself kind of thing like i can kind of not really think about it while i'm doing it picks up on a brush picks up on my finger it's just really nice and the colors are fun they're just different because i could get a lot of looks out of this it's kind of like there's a nice sort of unifying for me, 
for me. There's a nice unifying kind of crease shade. And then you can go into the pink direction, you can go for some drama, or you can go into the kind of orange direction, or you could really just stay in those silvers, and that's really pretty too. And the silver is not insane, you know? I feel like it's a really nice inner corner silver that gives a nice highlight without, I don't know, looking like the only thing on my face. The only thing I would say is that there doesn't really feel like there's a shade that I can put like right up here. I guess I could use a little bit of the gold. We'll see, we'll see that like orangey shade and just see what happens if I put that there. I mean, it's definitely gonna give a little more drama because it's darker, but we're already in drama territory. I'm not, not too mad about it. Plus we're gonna be using black eyeliner. I don't know why they sent me two black eyeliners. Let's see. If you need a friend, I'm feeling my behind. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. This packaging is not giving luxury. It's not. It looks like drugstore. These are the same. They're the same. They're both retractable eyeliners in 01 black. That's all they are. I mean, not all they are, but I mean, they're, they're the same. They're, they're the same, right? They're the same. I don't know why I have two, but let's put it on. <laughs> I'm going to do the black eyeliner. I'm going to do my eyebrows and I'm going to do some mascara and then we will come back and we will chat about lips. I'm gonna swatch all of them for you. this. I'm gonna open this and I'm gonna put this in my both of these in my empties. These are my hourglass unlocked mascaras and I was like oh it's okay I'll get one more use out of the old one and now I realize there's an old old one and I don't know which one it is. So we're just going to... Ugh, I don't know! <laughs> we're gonna go with the new one. <laughs> That's scary. I was like, oh, this one's only maybe like, you know, the very last leg, but it's like, okay, but there's another one. So I have no idea. I actually just sunk that in the garbage can. That is shocking. That is pure luck. Mike always says, if you need to, you need to lose something, have khaki throw it. <laughs> it's just pure chaos. Okay, I do want a little bit better of a blend here. So that's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. All right, and that's absolutely gorgeous. I do want to talk about how this performed. The eyeliner, I actually really liked it. It was really, really easy to use. It definitely, I feel like, you know, does the same thing that a lot of them do where, you know, you kind of have to let it dry down once and then go back in and patch it a little bit. But as far as a black is concerned, it's not going blue, which is huge for me. A lot of times that's the big issue that I have with a black eyeliner is that it, it's just like a cool black and it'll just be like mm, like glowing off of my face and this didn't do that so I also was really careful to be subtle I wanted a visible wing but I didn't want it to look rockabilly you know I was like all right khaki rein it in so let me swatch all these for you we're gonna do it live because I need to be able to tell y'all what they are as we're doing it I don't know <laughs> first we have the rose perfecto balm and this is in the shade 37. The component looks like this. It's beautiful. I already have one of the Rose Perfecto lip glosses. So the main thing with the Rose Perfecto is it's got this beautiful marbled thing to it. So it is just a balm. This is probably not gonna be something that I keep long-term just because that is not a color for me. There were other shades in these formulas. I kept at least one of each formula, but since Steph is the lipstick queen and she happened to be here, there were colors that they sent me that I gave to her yesterday because she's going to get use out of them and I'm not. And one of, at least one of them was kind of a pinky red like that where it just, it's just not my shade. And I'm never gonna reach for it because it's just not a color that I wear very well. Next we have the La Rouge Interdit Boom in the shade 10. And that is what she looks like. All the packaging is just so gorgeous. You pinch these little things at the bottom to open it. 
And this is something that I threatened to buy many times. And it is that kind of pH adjusting balm. So it starts out, you know, quite berry toned and it, you know, looks black in the tube, but it's going to do a pH adjusting thing, which is not my favorite thing in the world, but it is really nice. I, I wore it yesterday. It does stain on the lips. So some people find that really appealing. pH adjusting things tend to do that. In fact, Abigail at Finding Ferdinand, who I work most closely with, was telling me, cause she, you know, helps with the formulations. She like does that. She's amazing. She just knows how everything works together. She was telling me how pH adjusters actually work. What it is, is it's like, it's already the color that it's going to be, except they do something to neutralize the pH of it. And so it's like already that pink color. It's not your imagination that they they all turn the same color. So it's just this one pigment that they basically use something to manipulate it so that you can't see it in the formula. And then it basically just turns back into itself on you. So it's not even, it's not morphing. We all knew this, but it's not morphing to be adaptive to you. It was already a color. They did some smoke and mirrors to make it not appear in the tube when you looked at it. And then it just turns back into the color because it changes the pH when it hits your lips, but it's not, it's not mood changing. It's not adaptive. It's not your perfect color. It's all a lie. So here we have the La Rouge Sheer Velvet in the shade 16. Beautiful, beautiful. And this is you know, sheer velvet. I'm assuming is going to be, oh my God, it's very similar to me to the Hindash lipstick formula, that really beautiful, not re is it Rest and Roses? Yeah, I think it's Rest and Roses. This reminds me a lot of Rest and Roses. It's not quite as pink, but it's got that same sheer matte quality to it. That's actually, maybe I'll go ahead and swatch Rest and Roses, hang on. Yeah, similar formula, but as I remember, Rest and Roses is much pinker. This is almost like rusty by comparison. And y'all would probably wanna see in comparison to the Black Balm, what the, Finding Ferdinand Black Balm looks like. This is Aja Provocateur. Uh, against it, this is not pH adjusting. So this is just the color that it's going to stay on you. Whereas this one gets on your mouth and gets quite pH adjusted. And then also our treasure, our love, the Hermes Prunoir. And that's what she looks like by comparison. So I would recommend either of these over that if you are not a pH adjusting person, because when that gets on your lips, it's gonna turn a lot pinker. There's another shade in that formula, the La Rouge Deep Velvet in the shade 36, and that's gonna be a really nice red, like a holiday red, much, much more pigmented. So same package, but it's going to be a different formula the HD of it all, the 4K of it all. And they do have a smell, I think it's pretty subtle. It doesn't bother me. I mean, I always want a lip product to have a, have a smell of some persuasion, like I do like a scent, but it's the flowery ones that don't always appeal to me. This is the last one before the one we're actually going to apply. And this is the La Rouge Interdit Cream Velvet in the shade 10. And this one also had, this was the one that came in a like deeper kind of pink red color. And that was one that I gave to Steph, but it's this really beautiful liquid lipstick formula, right? It's not going to dry all the way down. It's just more of that like moussey cream. It's beautiful. All these colors are so gorgeous. And then finally, the one that we're going to apply today is in this really beautiful fuzzy case. I love the fuzzy case. It's so fussy. It's so like in the best way possible. All right, let's do this. Bah. What do I have on right now? What have I had on the whole video? Oh, you know, I bought another tube of the why I saw candy glaze. <laughs> Shocking to absolutely no one. Oh yeah. Wow. It's not too pigmented. It's super comfortable. What a color. That's a truly my lips, but better color, isn't it? That's nice. Does make me want to put more blush on. That's really, really lovely. That lip color is awesome. That's so beautiful and super comfortable, lightweight. I felt like I could really like get it even on my lips and put like a lot on without it, you know, the pigment taking over because it's nice and sheer and the fragrance is not overwhelming. God, that's pretty. Jeez. Yes, we need more blush. So this is the Prism Libre blush in Mousseline Lilas, Lilas you know, lilac-y, lilac khaki, and it is not screwing around. <clears throat> it is not screwing around. We're just going to get the tiniest bit of that on the brush, and I'm gonna go kind of at the top of my cheeks here. Yeah. Do you see the difference? Here it is, here's without. It's very subtle, 
but it's just putting that little bit of like, yeah, a little bit of coolness. I love that. Glad I did that. That was nice. Good job, Khaki. <sighs> I love art math. God, that's pretty. That was just, that was it. I think that there were people probably, if they have tried this in the comments, like rooting for me to like, come on Khaki, just open that blush up and put it on. You'll become a believer. That's awesome. I did say I was gonna try and use the highlighter on top of everything else. So we have the potential to really screw the pooch here, but I'm going to risk it for the collective scientific biscuit here. I'm going to put the highlighter on the back of my hand. I'm going to grab it on a sponge and we're gonna hope for the best. I kind of believe in her. You know, I just kind of, I wanna believe. <laughs> yes. And I feel perfectly comfortable calling that a success. And talk about no smoke and mirrors. You can decide whether you think it's a success too, because this is in 4K. <laughs> you can tell me what you think, because you can see it with your eyeballs. So, wow, nothing really unpleasantly surprised me. The one thing that like just continues to blow my mind is sort of this like collective energy where all of these luxury fashion houses have decided that like lipstick is their thing. And not just the formulas, but like the shades. Cause that shade is just absolutely dialed into perfection for my skin tone. It's ridiculous. Like I would wear the freaking crap out of that. I will wear the freaking crap out of it. And you don't catch me in like a colored matte lip balm that often, you know? But like, I will wear the crap out of that. That's so pretty. It's awesome. Okay, so again, thank you to Givenchy for sending these. Let's do a little smash or pass through what we tried today. This is already off the charts. We knew that, okay? But the highlighter version, yeah. Now we're talking. I'm not a highlighter girl, but a liquid highlight, Yes, I am a huge, huge fan. I bought this at the Chanel Atelier in New York City because when I tried it, I liked it so much and it has literally never let me down. It's a fantastic formula for like color correction and illumination and pretty much anything you would wanna use it for. Under makeup, over makeup, what have you. And so the, the comparability of these two things is very appealing to me, you know, in and of itself. But this is easier to use as specifically a highlighter, you know, with the wand and everything like that, still no visible particles of like glitter or something. It's just a really beautiful wet shine. And while this is beautiful, it is. I do think that it serves a more subtle purpose. It's kind of meant to be more of a primer kind of thing, whereas this is definitely decidedly a highlighter. And I'm glad that we got to see it on my skin alone because y'all got to see exactly how effective it is. It's so thin. It almost has no color to it, which is really cool. And the look that it gave my skin was wet. Like it just shone in the light and looked wet. And that's really what I'm looking for in a highlighter. Something that doesn't look like a highlighter. It just looks like really nice kind of glistening skin. This is fantastic. This is just such a good compliment to the concealer itself. It's just as easy to use and it's so beautiful in its own right. These little blushes, I will say, this is a fussy way to use it. And I get the Prism Libre of it all, like, you know, with the powder as well. Where did she go? She ran away, she was scared. She heard what I did to her friend. Her friend knows what they did. This is a little bit fussy, but I'm a little bit fussy. <laughs> And I think that they're gorgeous. Could you get this same look from an hourglass powder? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like to me, this is very much giving like hourglass meets Dior because you're getting kind of the Dior rosy glow blushes with more of an hourglass finish. So that's a high compliment because I love an hourglass finish. Like it's definitely giving that beautiful blur on the skin. And it's easier for me to kind of fit in my color theory brain because I'm looking at the colors, whereas there's something about the hourglass palettes where I'm looking at them and like, in Steph's words, she did a really good job saying it. She said, they swatch so differently than they look in the pan. And that's what kind of makes them hard to like index in my brain. Whereas like, this is super straightforward to me. And I could see myself reaching for these a lot because just the way that it looks in the container and the way that it translates on your skin is really intuitive. This is awesome. I mean, look at my skin. It looks really, really nice. I didn't pull out my Kosas. When was the last time that I ended up loving a makeup look at the end of a video and I hadn't pulled out the Kosas powder because I lean on it so hard? Like, 
Okay, that looks great. And we haven't done a finishing spray or anything. Like it just looks really, really good. So huge fan here of these. Like I said, a little fussier than opening up an hourglass palette, but like, I just love the results. I think it's super, super beautiful. The eyeshadow palette, I also really like. You know, this is my first experience using this formula. Like, would this have been the color story I, had, I would have chosen? Not necessarily, because I think that there are shades in here that I'm never gonna use. You know, I'm not gonna do like a hot pink eye look probably, and I'm probably gonna never gonna use this black, but it's a nine pan. It's not like it's a quad where like half of it is unusable to me or something. I could still definitely see myself getting, I mean, I used one, two, three, four, five. I used more than half of the palette today on this look and I love the way that it looks and it was really easy. So I think that especially as far as like, you know, a holiday release is usually something a little bit more exciting. They've done something really beautiful here and the formula makes me excited to try more eyeshadow from them in the future. Like it didn't disappoint me. And then God, I mean, I don't know how to review every single lip product that we tried today. We will just talk about the one that I'm wearing because it's great. <laughs> It's just really, really good, okay? Like, believe your eyes. I just, ugh. It's something I could see myself wearing every day because it's the color of my lips, but like in a more even, I don't know, just like sophisticated way. It's very minimalist looking. This whole, I, I'm like shocked actually how like minimal this looks for kind of, I feel like the boundaries that some of these colors, you know, seemed to push for me. It all looks so at home and together and it's the finishes. The textures on the skin, they're so subtle. You know, the shimmers are not wildly shimmery. The blushes have that beautiful blurring property that I compared to Hourglass. And the lip is not wildly all the way at the end of matte, but it's not giving like, you know, crazy, crazy glossy either. If I wanted to, I could add a gloss. It's just subtle and beautiful and sophisticated and timeless and like that, it speaks volumes to me. Like there is something, like someone had a vision in mind putting these things together. I just feel like it is a complete idea. And that's always a nice feeling to me when I get done with a face of makeup where I feel like <sighs> someone did the, the hard work up front of making sure that this was a complete idea before I got it in my hands. And that's really, really nice. So I hope that all of that was helpful and let me know down below your experience with any of these formulas and anything else that I should try from Givenchy because I am quite impressed. And oh, the eyeliner. I like that. I'm like shocked how much I like the eyeliner. I don't love the packaging. The packaging is as run of the mill as anything else in this packaging. Like it feels just like Thrive and it feels just like L'Oreal. You know what I mean? Like it's it, like, I feel like they could have done a little bit more to make these luxurious but then again I don't know what the price point is on them so either way it's a lovely formula it's very very pretty and I enjoyed working with it but this is the vibe I'm super pleased with it I hope you all enjoyed watching this if you did please do give it a thumbs up and let me know if you're not already subscribed you know welcome hi this is watch a few more videos, you know, take your time, settle in. But like, this is a very no judgment space. <laughs> this is a place where we are very imperfect doing our makeup and I talk about color theory and I swatch things next to each other. And we're just very honest about my uh, proclivity towards luxury. Subscribe if you're cool, cool people subscribe. It'd be cool if you did. And I will put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy if you liked this one. I love you all so much. And I will see you in the next one, I hope. Bye.